I have this Class D full bridge four channel amplifier. Going to be doing a full review on it, sound test as well as see how much true power it puts out. Stay tuned. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and dive into the unboxing first. I went ahead and put the links in the description for the amplifier here, the VAD1004 channel class D amplifier, full bridgeable. Also the subwoofer I'm testing and the speakers for a sound test. And I'm also going to be clamping the True World Power. So this amplifier is rated at 250 watts RMS by four channels at 2 ohm. And it is bridgeable up to 4 ohm, which is what I'm going to be testing today for the power output soon. So really nice, small footprint space. Powerful amplifier, the VAD series from NVX. Looking forward to giving you all a full review on this as well as showing you how it sounds on some speakers and subs today. So looking here on the left side first, three 30 amp fuses with 12 gauge speaker inputs, or as I should say outputs, on the left here with all four channels. And it does show the bridgeable left and right channels on there as well. And it has four gauge inputs for the ground and power. And here on the right side, it has inputs and outputs for the RCAs, the front and rear for the four channel components, and the input configuration if you choose to go either two channel or four channel, depending on if you're going to be bridging it or only using two of those channels. So you could use this amplifier for only two of the four channels. I'm going to be testing only the rear channel today. And it has a front and rear crossovers like any other amplifier has with the X over frequency as well as the gain settings. I'll be tuning the gain on this as well. So I wanted to pull out the back panel. Normally don't do that, but I wanted to for this amplifier since it didn't have any warranty issues I was going to have. So there you go. You can look at the back. You can see how everything looks. Anybody that knows anything about amplifier internal components, I hope you appreciate that. Everybody, be sure to give it a like if you haven't already. I really appreciate y'all watching my videos and subscribing for cardio videos. Look at the amplifier manual as well. Show y'all all the key things. I don't like to say everything in the manual because you can literally look at that at the website and read it yourself on the manual if you hit pause. But there you go. Looking forward to seeing how this thing sounds. Let's go ahead and get this thing installed. All right, so let's go ahead and get everything installed first. So I have everything installed, so now I'm going to go ahead and tune the amplifier. I'm going to be testing only the rear channel, so this is a four-channel amplifier. I'm going to be testing the rear channel today on subwoofers as well as on speakers. So I'm going to do two tests. So let's go ahead and tune the rear. So I'm going to be tuning the gain with a device, so I will do that one last. So I know I'm going to be testing subwoofers first, so I want to do the LPF, which is the low pass filter, so I can cut out higher frequencies over 60 to 80 hertz, so that will be set there. And since I am doing a subwoofer test, this is a Class D four channel amplifier, I am going to have this frequency turned all the way down. And the crossover X over will be on LPF, so we know we're going to be sending low frequency signals. And my RCAs are coming from the base output frequency, low frequencies of my stereo head unit. So now we're going to go ahead and get the subwoofer test installed after I set the gain. So we're going to do first turn on real quick. We're going to go ahead and connect the blue wire to the battery I have, and that'll be able to turn on the amplifier. All right. The amplifier is now on. Now let me set the gain. All right, so I have my SMD device, link in the description if you want to know where to get these on Amazon or eBay. It's around $200 tool to gain set any amplifier. I'm tuning a gain on the four channel VAD1004. So I'm gonna be testing this out, setting my gain this way. It is a four channel with a subwoofer RCAs in it currently, but it can actually go to speakers. I have my crossover low pass, so that way I can tune at a 40 hertz tone and it'll be able to pick up the clipping signal. So let me go turn the vehicle on, make sure I get the 14 volt range with the battery from the alternator charging the, alt, the battery. And we're gonna go ahead and set my gain real quick. Got my vehicle on, it's picking up a 40 hertz detect with the 
DD1 minus five hertz tone. I had to make sure I'm on four channel because I'm using the rear, not the two channel. So I swapped that over to four channel for the rear. Let me make sure my volume's 30 and I'm gonna set my gain. We're good. So I like volume 30. I have a uh, 35 volume clipping head unit, but I'll set my clipping at volume 30. Now I'm gonna turn this up until I see the distortion red. Here we go. Should be really quick. We'll see the red distortion pick up. All right, you see the red? Now I'm gonna slowly turn it down. All right, we're in business, so there we go. We got my gain set. Barely ticking red, just a little bit lower. Okay, my gain is set. I'm gonna go ahead and see how much power it's putting out on this subwoofer. We'll see how much clamped power. This is a multimeter. This is a clamp meter. We're gonna measure your volts coming out of the going to the speaker, sorry, and then how much amperage is going to the speaker. Multiply these two numbers for real world test. Divide the numbers to see what your impedance change is. So it's starting out at four ohm or 3.7 from the coils of the sub. And then we're gonna see how much rise we get as well as how much power we're putting out to the subwoofer. I'm gonna be testing on a burp setup and then I'll play some extra bonuses if y'all wanna see how much it plays on music as it changes. So here we go. Got everything set up. We're gonna see how much power it's putting out. Let me get my test tone ready. Let's hope it don't blow nothing. I'm gonna go, gonna go ahead and set it up. We're gonna test it at 40 hertz and see how much power this thing's putting out at 40 hertz. Here we go. It'll be a quick burp. So 78, 78 and three and some change, 3.6. I'll be doing these summaries off camera. I'll look at them and give you a summary presentation. There we go, that's 40 hertz. Now let's test 30 hertz. Thirty hertz test next. All right. So those are the two tests. Now let's find the results and then I'll play some bonus tests with music and you can do the math on your own. So I clamped real world test 283 watts at 40 hertz and 647 watts at 30 hertz. A lot less rise at 30 hertz versus 40, which is to be expected because it was right around tuning on this subwoofer. So now let's do the other tests. So I'll play one of the songs I just played one more time so we could see what kind of real world power test. And all you got to do is multiply these two numbers to see how much power is truly being put out is actually going to that. So here we go. So we'll play one more time. Go to the club for a real world power test. So there you go. You got to kind of multiply those numbers to see whatever you want throughout that whole test. It was playing mid 20 hertz up into the mid 40 hertz range and 30 hertz range. So a lot of different tests. So I've got an X series MVX series kit that I'm going to be testing out the component speakers for a sound test real quick with this amplifier. I'm just doing a review on the VAD 1004. So here we go. Hey, I got the vehicle turned on. It's in the 14 volt range. So I know I got clean signal. A little bit of RCA or ground noise issue, but it's okay. Ignore the little bit of sound quality problem you'll hear with static if you can hear it on camera or not so here we go <laughs>
hope you enjoyed all of those tests. We did an RMS power test, see how much true power is putting out to the subwoofer bridged at 4 ohm with impedance change. Also test out a little music test on the speakers. So be sure to give it a thumbs up if you haven't already. Subscribe for more videos. Check out the links in the description for all your products from NVX. And shout out to Explicit Audio one more time for a great box. Did a really good job. It did good output for this single 12-inch subwoofer, 1,000 watts RMS from NVX. I'll see you all in the next one.